Hey guys, welcome to my wreath shop, aka my garage. Um, gosh, I've got the the um, tripod up really high. I didn't even realize that. Um, what? Well, come on in. <clears throat> And as you join uh, the, the live group, um, make sure to comment and tell me where you're from. Of course, the dogs are going crazy right now, so I'll have to shut the door in just a sec. Hold on. Um, but come on in and tell me where you're from and tell me what you're doing today. So today is Thursday, the last Thursday of October. Can you believe that? This year has just flown by. Um, let me just see if everybody, I can't, make sure you comment when you come in because I will not know, first off, if I'm in the right group and right page, and then also if um, you can see me. Yay! I'm starting to see somebody. Hey, Barb! <laughs> Welcome. So as you come in, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share this video real quick on um, some of my favorite groups. So let me just do that real quick. And then I will um, shut the door. Okay, I had to shut the door. The dogs were going cray cray. So let me share one more place. So tell me what you guys are doing. What are you doing on this uh, crazy Thursday? Are y'all getting ready for Halloween? Okay, so I've got that. I've shared it in a couple of groups. Yay, you guys, welcome. And um, I can't believe that this is the last Thursday of the month. Where has the time gone? Are you guys getting ready for Halloween? And um, uh, you getting the costumes ready? I haven't even purchased my um, Halloween candy yet. Can you believe that? Okay, so now that you guys are coming in and I'm gonna look on my um, iPad, I'm gonna take it across the room with me to the workstation so that I can, um, see everyone's comments so when you know when you comment I want to be able to see it okay so um and then let's see if you can see this a little bit better and I know that there's a problem sometimes with you hearing me so I'm going to try to yell when I get back over there a little bit louder and um so oh okay so everyone's coming in and oh my gosh let's see what you guys are doing Oh, somebody's getting ready to make a wreath. <laughs> oh, okay. Somebody's matting pictures for their church's anniversary. Nice. Nice. Okay, so, well, okay, like, let me just tilt this up a tad bit so that you'll be able to see my workstation. Can you guys see me? Yay! All right, one thing I forgot to tell you, I forgot to introduce myself. Um, I'm Julie Samako with Southern Charm Rees, where we make beautiful rees and teach you how to make and sell them. I'm also a business coach and mentor to an awesome group of creative entrepreneurs through my Success Circle membership group. Um, we just did a live call last night where they were able to ask me questions live on a conference call, and it was amazing. Um, I just, uh, I'm just so proud of that, that group of um, women who were uh, working to change their lives with their creative business and bring some extra income to their family. Um, I'm just so proud of them for working so hard and, 
everything they're doing. And this month we were talking about time management, so it's perfect for this crazy, um, you know, hectic time for, you know, the holidays and everything coming up. So let's get started. I think you guys can see me. What we're going to do today is we're going to make um, a, screen, a Christmas screen door wreath, okay? So let me, um, I'm going to be looking down here every now and then for uh, comments so that I can um, reply to any comments that you might have. And um, if you like what you see, please, you know, click the little share um, man or button at the bottom um, left, I think, and share it. And, you know, um, I just, I'm so happy that you guys are joining me and it means, it means a lot to me. And I know this is in the middle of the work day and some of you are actually working. Are you sneaking this video while you work? And, but um, let me just, let's get started, okay? So the first thing, if you caught my last weekend, no, last Thursday, I went um, covertly uh -huh, to Hobby Lobby and I did some Christmas shopping. And one of the things that I purchased was um, this tea leaf wreath, okay? So look how thin it is. Can you see how thin it is? Literally, it's like um, three inches wide, if that. So here's the back. Okay, and then see how skinny and thin it is? So this is the base. So this is the base for my wreath, okay? This is what I'm gonna work on. All right, so now that we have that, all right, I'm going to use, this is um, rustic wire, and it basically is just wire, and it's wrapped in some kind of, um, I guess paper, not paper, but some kind of material to make it look rustic. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on the video, but it's um, it's really cool. You can buy it already like this. I, you could buy it at Hobby Lobby. I bought some last week. I'm going to cut 18 inches with my wire cutters. All right, and then what we're going to do is I'm just going to fashion a um, wreath hanger on the back, okay? Okay, so Christina, I, she's asking, what section of Hobby Lobby did I find this wreath? It's um, for my Hobby Lobby, it was in the floral department in the back where all of the garland is hanging. Um, you know, there's the silk flower, not, not the seasonal, not the seasonal, but where the normal um, uh, silk flowers are and, you know, everyday silk flower stuff. That's where it was, where all the garlands, and I think there's also some um, uh, grapevine wreaths and stuff back there. So you know what section I'm talking about, girl. You probably live in there as much as I do. You know what I'm talking about. All right, so Lisa's asking for the total cost. Um, how about I'll tell you how much I pay and you can add it up. Uh, because I didn't actually add it yet because I don't know what's going to go in it. <laughs> I just kind of throw things on the table to see how it's going to look. All right, so all I've done um, is just wrapped the, um, the rustic wire around the grapevine wreath base. And I just twisted it a couple times. So it just made a, a wreath hanger, okay? So it was very, very easy. And I'm going to put it on my trusty wreath. Um, easel and this wreath is $19.99 and it was 40% off okay so this one is at Hobby Lobby let's see is it just me okay Lori if it's just repeating you might need to refresh if you're not getting this you can go back out and come back in and refresh because so far I haven't seen anybody else having a problem. Christina's saying it looks fine where she's at. Okay, so I just kind of go through and fluff it up just a little bit. You know, we want to keep it, um, you know, a screen door. I have to say I don't have one on my own home. But um, it's really only like that deep, maybe three inches deep, three, maybe four inches deep between a screen door and um, the door. So, but I wanted to, so I'm starting with something that's very flat to begin with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in more greenery. 
um, do you, because it's really, um, it's not a very wide wreath. So what you can do to make it wider is just add some more greenery around the edges. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna use this grass. I got this at Carolina Pottery and it is $3.99. I've already started cutting some of the things off. But you use your, just use your wire cutters and I'm gonna start trimming because if, if you go like this, you can see that there's sections. And I'm just going to section off the, the bush like that and I'm going to cut the sections off welcome as you um, thanks for joining me you guys I see some more people coming in just to let you know we're making a screen door Christmas wreath um, it's going to go between a screen door and a regular door so it's got to be really thin and I think some of these um, this is two so I've just um, I've added a wreath hanger and now if you can if you want to um, if you miss the wreath part you can catch it or the wreath hanger you can see that on the replay but right now we're trying to make the wreath a little bit wider by adding more greenery um, in the way of this grass. And of course, wouldn't you know it as soon as I go live, the people next door start mowing their grass. Love it! That's the, that's the uh, I guess the downfall of doing live videos. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm just going to first, always before I glue anything, is I put, um, I just place it in the wreath. So I just space it out a little bit to see where I'm going to like it, okay? So I'm just randomly going um, around it's good. I can already tell this is going to be tricky putting this in. I'm going to have to pull some of the grass off on the edge. Okay. And I know you probably can't see all the way on the back. Let's see. Ugh. It's kind of hard for me to work it and then also let you guys see a good view of it. They're saying, I'm so happy you're doing this. Well, good. I'm glad it's helpful for you. She said she thought she was the last person left with the screen door. Girl, I don't think so. They're very, very popular here in the South. <laughs> well, they have to be. You've got to let the, the um, some cool weather, you know, cool air in. I can already tell this is going to be a pain to um, glue in because it's the grapevine wreath is very um, tight. It's like real tight. So do you see how I'm just adding the um, the grass around the edge? Not I'm not necessarily putting it on the front because it needs to be thin. It doesn't need to be very um, deep. And of course, I've never made this before. Don't y'all love it when I try brand new stuff live? For me to, you know, hopefully it won't fail, but if it does, you guys will get to see how I fix my mistakes. So I'm just taking some of the um, grass on the edge um, because it was, um, it didn't have a bit a long stem. So I'm just weeding some of the grasses off. But don't get rid of this. You can still use it in a bow and um, to add more filler in a bow 
or a grape bun, I mean, or a lantern swag. Okay. So I think that looks good. So once you like um, the position of the grass, once you like it, can you guys see? Yeah, I think you can. So once you like the position of the grass, that's when I'm going to go back in and um, hot glue it, okay? So let me do that. No, uh, so let's see. Christina's asking if there's a, a camera that can show a closer view, and um, unfortunately there is not. Because with Facebook Live, you have to record on your phone, your mobile phone. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pushing the wire into the grapevine wreath, okay? Gail's saying they can't see, they can't see either. I mean, I'll try to, how about I try to move the camera just a little bit closer. Let me get this in. So I'm just gluing the grass in to the grapevine wreath. really as close as I can get it because um the way that Facebook works is they just give you this little like a third of your screen on your phone so for me to get the whole like image in I've got to put you far back Now, if you have, if for some reason it doesn't want to go inside that grapevine because it's real, if it's real tight, you can just glue it behind the leaves that are already on there. So if you're just now joining me, welcome. We're making a Christmas um, screen door wreath. Um, so it needs to be real narrow to go between a screen door. And, you know, let me get some um, moss. So this is just a little bit of moss. When you when you have some uh, hot glue that's like dripping, I'm just gonna put a little bit of moss on it, so it will keep it from uh, you know dripping all the way down on my on my greenery. Okay. Here, let's see if you can see this side better. Probably not. But I'm just putting some hot glue on the edge. And then I'm sticking it inside the grapevine. And you guys, don't be afraid to try new things, okay? Don't be afraid to take a wreath that's already pre-made from the store and add some more stuff to it. Just add, you know, a little flair um, to it, okay? So don't be afraid to do that. So there, I've added, I think I've added enough grass around the sides um, that I'm going to add. And so you can, can you see it a little bit better from that view? So you can see the grass that I've added and it adds a little bit more, um, uh, you know, what do you call it, width to the, to the wreath. So it makes it a little bit more substantial, but it doesn't add to the, um, you know, the depth of it. 
Let's see if there's any questions. Yeah, okay, so Christina's saying it's probably because the wreath is green and so is the grass. Now I also have this, um, this um, what is this? It's not boxwood, I think it's eucalyptus. But I was thinking I could add that in too. So I think I'm gonna add that as well. So I'm gonna add some eucalyptus. This is plastic. I actually got this wholesale and it was probably only like a couple of dollars, really. But you can you can probably find this in Hobby Lobby or you know Michaels or Carolina Pottery. Again, I'm just gonna go through and I think um let's see, I'll probably just put it between the grass, but some of it needs to be cut down a little bit. So I'm just making little sprigs, okay? Do you see that? Some little sprigs of, uh, I'm trying to see if you could see it any better. Some sprigs of this uh, eucalyptus. And I'm going through the, the, between where I've already added the grass. And I'm just gonna place it to see if it's where I like it. You know, re just remember before, um, especially when you're new starting out, just place things around before you uh, glue it in. Um, that helps a lot because sometimes, you know, you get it on there and you don't want to have to necessarily um, yank it out if it's hot glued. I think that's going to be good. So I'm just going to go around and go back in. I'm going to take it out and hot glue these pieces on. All right, so I'm adding it to the very side of the grapevine wreath, not on the front, because I don't want to add any depth to the, to the wreath. careful with this hot glue gun because um, it will burn. I always use high temperature glue gun, okay, high temperature. Um, you know, I know some of the people um, who do silk flowers and stuff, they use uh, the, the melting pots or the, the melting pans, but to me, it's not hot enough, okay? It just, it just doesn't get hot enough for me because there's um, times when it you, it gets real cold or it gets real hot and it tends to like pop off. So I, I've always had some good success with the high temperature glue gun. And then one more and I think we'll be good. Yeah, Nish, this can be viewed afterwards. This will be on my Facebook page, and um, you can watch the replay if you can't watch through the whole thing. And then next week, I'll have it on my blog. You can always find it there on my blog. And my blog, you can find it is at southerncharmreads.com forward slash blog. Okay. So you can see that we've added to the width of the wreath by adding in eucalyptus and grasses, but it's still really thin. Do you see that? Real thin, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, um, to me the base is done and that's, the, that's always the not so fun part. But now I'm gonna add in some of the um, Christmas stuff. And I love this as still be. Okay, I got this at Hobby Lobby last week. And do you see it? It's it's like a red glitter. And it's called a still be. I just love this. 
And Christina's saying, yeah, it looks great when you doctor it up. All right, so that's what I am. I'm a wreath doctor today. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to cut some of this off. And I don't know if I'm going to keep, I don't know if I'm going to cut this in half or keep it long. So let me just go through. I think I'm going to cut it short because I'm thinking it's going to stick out too far if I don't. So I'm going to cut. So what I did was I cut off one hole of the uh, flower. Okay. And now I'm going to cut it in half. So just where there's another bud coming out, that's where I cut it. So I just cut these in half so that it'll be a little shorter in the wreath. And then there's glue strings everywhere. All right, so remember, I'm just going to place them in for right now to see if that's where I like it. And I'm going to have them go all in the same direction. So I don't want to put one going that way. I want to put them all going in the same direction on the wreath. So whether it be that way or that way, just have them going all in the same direction. Cute. I'm wondering now if I should do a little bit, let me see if I should cut it even more. I think I'm going to cut them even shorter. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to cut the, I decided, you see how my brain thinks, you guys. That's what you should do is you just put it up there, see if it works. And if it doesn't, take it out and change it. And you know what? What if we add a bow? This is really pretty, don't you think? I just love how it brings out the deep red and the astilbe. Let me put that up there. Isn't that real pretty? So this is 525 a yard, and it's got berries um, and just evergreen leaves on there. And I think I'm just going to make a quick little bow. To do that, I'm just going to pinch at the bottom, and I'm not going to make a real full bow. It's just going to have real short loops, um, just a little bit to give it a little bit of uh, ribbon. Because, you, you know, I just love the texture that ribbon gives it. So let me um, see how far this is. So if I took the loop and measure it out, it's 8 inches. So from where I pinch it and where I start it to where I pinch it again, 8 inches. And then I loop it back around, okay? So that's four inch loop. So basically a four inch loop, all right? So now I've got the, the good side of the ribbon is facing away from me. I'm going to basically, let's see, I'm gonna measure this out at eight inches, okay? And mark it with my finger. And then I'm gonna pull that up around and pinch it, all right? So now I've got the two loops and the good part of the ribbon is facing to me now. And then I'm just going to wrap it back around. And usually I just eyeball it from here. I think I'm just gonna do three loops. And now this one is gonna be the longer tail. These are gonna be the tail. So what I do is I just make a big long loop. We'll see if I want my tail to be right here. And I just go like that. Cut it and put that in my fingers. All right. So this is what it looks like now before I add the a pi, uh, the wire. Okay. So it's got the three loops and then it's got this really long loop right here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is take my floral wire.
You could use a pipe cleaner if you want, but I use the floral wire. It will be really good to hide it in the greenery of the wreath. And I'm just gonna hold it real tight and then twist it, twist the wire on the back. And then you could twist the bow. You want this to be really tight. You don't want it slipping out. Okay. And so now I've got the wire on there and I'm going to cut the, this loop, this long loop right here, I'm just gonna cut it in half. And then I'm gonna fold it, fold it in half, and then cut it at an angle. Let's see, can you see it like that? So then it gives it just the finished edge, all right? So now I've got uh, just a little bow to add to the wreath. Now I've got to figure out where I want to put it. Do I want to put it? I think I'm going to put it at the top. Ooh, that'll look pretty. See, I always like, do I want it at the top or do I want it at the bottom? So, you know, looking at that, you can just decide what you like better. Do you like it at the bottom with, you know, it hanging down or do you like it at the top? So you put it where you like it, but I'm going to put this one at the top. So I just take the wire and I feed it behind the grapevine. I'm gonna try to lay it on top of the wire for the um, hanger. That way I know it's centered on the top. Make sure it's laying the way I like it before I um, twist it. So now I'm going to twist the wires in the back real tight. And I twist it out about an inch because to me an inch is a good length that I can um, easily wrap it and push it back into the grapevine wreath. And then I cut off the extra wire pieces and I'm just going to push it back in to the grapevine, okay? So now I've got the bow. So can you see the bow right there? And still, it's very thin, okay? It's still a thin wreath, all right? So I didn't add a lot of um, depth with the bow, but it added a lot of texture. So let me put that back. And now I'm gonna go through and add the, um, the still be. And check your comments. Jerry's saying I make it look so easy. Well, Jerry, I've been doing this for years, okay? So um, the more you do it, the more it will be, you know, easier for you. So you um, just got to get in there, girl. Get that hot glue gun going. Go to that, you know, trip to Hobby Lobby or wherever, Michael's, that you like. And then just um, get in there and start doing it because... I post, I think I posted already today a throwback Thursday picture of my first, one of my first wreaths. And my first wreaths were not great. They were horrible. Um, but people were still buying them. That's what surprised me now. I was like, how did somebody even want to buy that? But they did. So um, you, you don't know until you just get in there and try um, and you just never know that you might have, you know, your God-given talent might be this. So you just never know until you try something. So don't be afraid to get in there and try. Nancy's saying she missed the beginning. Oh, well, you can hit the replay at the end, okay? So keep watching. And then when the video is over, I will go back in. I mean, you could come back to the page and watch the replay. Okay, so you see I'm just putting the red still be in going all the same direction, so it's following the same direction, and I'm just spacing them out. And I'm gluing these to the, the, um, the actual uh, leaves of the wreath. I'm not actually sticking them into the grapevine. 
because they're so short. You guys, making wreaths is just so relaxing sometimes. Sometimes I just get in here, ow, I burn myself. I get in here and, um, you know, I put the, my Kayla radio on and I can zone out um, the family. <laughs> Isn't that horrible to say, but I can zone them out and just, uh, you know, craft until I am happy again. And then, you know, it, you can join the, the family back or society again. It's just so, I know I'm not the only one. You, you guys, tell me I'm not the only one where crafting is just very therapeutic. Oh my gosh, Kimberly says that she has a wreath still that she made when she was 13. Well, now that is some good construction then, if it lasted that long. So I'm just going through and I'm adding in these, um, this red is still be throughout the wreath. I'm going on the front and I'm going on the side. Don't forget the bottom. So I'm going to put some underneath the bow. Also, I think that um, coloring has a huge, plays a huge uh, factor in wreath design. And I get asked all the time, you know, how do you pick out your colors? And, you know, I just don't know how to do that part. And if you need, I've got a great tutorial on my blog, southerncharmreese.com forward slash blog. Go to the search box and type in color. And it's a great article on how I use color, you know, how I come up with the color to use in the wreaths, um, you know, how... I usually start with the ribbon or a sign or something like that to get the inspiration from. But I show you how to use a color wheel so that you can, you know, see um, how the, the color that you want to use falls on the color wheel and how it works um, and how your, your, your mind will see it and your eyes see it. But um, also you could get inspiration from fabric. You know, if you have a favorite shirt that um that you wear that you just love the fabric you know they you could you could see the shirt fabric and get color combinations off of that and know that it'll blend in a wreath All right so you can use um upholstery fabric or you know fabric from um you know a dress or something like that so you can get inspiration from everywhere and try to figure, usually it's just somebody's already put the color together for you and you just basically copy it and put it into the wreath color, okay? I'm just going to try not to burn myself. Push that down in there. All right, so let me show you up close. So can you see where I've added the um, red is still be and the bow? And if you look, it's still very thin, still a very thin wreath, okay? Put it back up here. And I think what I'm going to do is add, um, I've got these white flowers and I've got some red berries. I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet. Okay, so they're like in my craft room, <laughs> my uh, my messy craft room right now. 
All right, so I've got these red berries. Oh, this would really tie in well with the, the berries on the bow, don't you think? So I think I'm gonna add some of this, and this was purchased wholesale, and um, I didn't have the price on it, but it was probably, um, I don't know, like a dollar if that. But you can get this stuff, you can get these red berries everywhere now this time of year. And I'm just going to cut these off Again, I'm just dividing it up to make it little because I don't want it um, to add any depth to the wreath. I'm gonna keep everything short. And it's lightweight, so it'll glue really well into the leaves of the wreath. And the wreath leaves are plastic. So I'm just gonna go through and hot glue these in. Now, if you want to place them first, you can, but I'm just going to randomly hot glue. And so if I add something there, I'm going to come back over here and add something down here. That'll just give it some balance. You don't have to do that, um, but I'm just going to do it for this one. I mean, you can obviously do a bunch of berries on one side, you know, you don't have to do the um, making it balanced, but that's what I'm going to do for this one. Again, it's still going in the same direction um, that I used for the astilbe. It's all going to be flowing in one direction. Um, that helps with your eyes when you're looking at it. Your eyes will be able to flow around and follow a line, and it just is more pleasing to the eye. So do you guys have any um, Halloween plans? Did y'all go to any parties or anything? Um, yeah, I would have to have an actual life if I was going to a party. <laughs> and I've been working a lot lately, so I haven't been going to any Halloween parties this year. But um, do you guys, like, do you adults get dressed up? I know when the kids were little, we did. We got dressed up. Um, this year, I'm going to be doing good to get the Halloween candy and be home to answer the door. So I didn't know, I mean, when my, I remember when I was growing up, even my dad would dress up in um, a costume, which was hilarious because that was not his personality at all. And when he did it, my mom about had a, a, a stroke. She was like, what? You know, she couldn't believe that my dad was reaching outside of his comfort zone for his kids. All right, just a few more. Uh, don't forget to put them on the sides so that when you're looking at the wreath on the side, you're going to have, um, you know, some red going on the sides of the wreath. You don't want to put everything on the front. And um, you don't want everything sticking out on the top. You want to push it in. You want some down deep and some that are a little bit more on top. Because what that will do is it'll just add a lot of um, dimension, which is kind of hard to do already because it's so, so thin. I think just a couple more. <clears throat> and don't forget the bottom. You would be surprised about, um, you know, especially if your wreath is on your door. I'm going to have to hold this just a little bit because it's on the bottom. But, you know, if you um, have stairs leading up to your door and you, you're looking at your wreath on the door, up, so you're going to want to have some, you know, greenery and uh, red color on the bottom so that when people are coming to your door and looking up, they're going to see that red as soon as their eye hits that wreath. Okay, hopefully this is all dried. And I'm gonna show you. So you can 
can see the berry and you can see how it's on the sides and on the top. And here's the back. But isn't that cute? I mean, gosh, that looks pretty just like that. Let's see if you have any questions real quick. Linda, the first red, the first red item I put in is just that red is still be. I got this at Hobby Lobby last week. Make sure you watch my Hobby Lobby video from last week. It's hilarious. Okay, uh, there's a great question. So Kimberly is asking, um, how do you price that wreath? So I will add up all of, that's why I'm keeping my little tags. I'm going to add up all of my expenses, um, the cost that went into the wreath, and then um, I use a formula to calculate the price, okay? I don't, I don't put any emotion into the value, into the pricing. I don't price it based on what I can afford, um, you know, personally, but I basically just use a formula and I plug it into that formula and... Um, that's it. I mean, so it depends on who you are and what your business is and how long you've been into business. And there's different businesses use different formulas. So no, there's not a right formula and a wrong formula. Okay. It's just what works for your business. Sometimes, um, you have it a little cheaper starting off so that you can build up, you know, clients and get repeat customers and stuff like that. And then, um, as you start getting more customers and more business, you start raising your prices. So that would be a good trip tip for you if you're just starting out. Um, but you know, sometimes I just, but right now to the point where I just put it into the, my formula and I do not think about it. I put it in there. I don't like ask myself, is this too much? You know, I don't do that. I just, uh, create the, create the, the price and um, add in, uh, make sure to add in all my business expenses too. So, you know, um, I have business expenses like websites and um, I have people that help me and, you know, I have to make sure that I calculate all of my expenses that are going to be throughout the year and I add it into, um, I divide it out to see how much per wreath or per item I'm gonna put it in and I also I make sure I do that like especially too if you're listing on Etsy you know you've got Etsy fees and stuff like that so don't forget to add all of that shipping shipping box shipping tape the glue the wire all right so you got to add everything in everything is in um, goes into uh, that formula all right now look I'm just gonna I'm thinking about adding some of this white flower I don't know yet. Let me look. Let me put it in. I think what it's going to do is it's going to just brighten it up a little bit. Um, it might be too much. And, and this has, I don't even know what this is. This is from, uh, this is actually a summer flower from Michaels. And the whole bush was $7.99. I'm sure I got it on sale. And it is called... It doesn't tell me the name of it, what the flower is, but it looks like it's got, it's like real silver, um, feathery flocked leaves that I could also put in there if I wanted, but I don't want to, I don't want to use that color. I don't like that color. So I think I'm going to actually divide these up more so they're not so, so much white. The wreath size, I think, was 14 inches. Somebody was asking what the wreath size is. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's about 14 inches. So it's not very wide. 
And if you're just joining me, we started with a pre-made uh, tea leaf wreath, all right? And we're just adding stuff to it to give it a little bit of color. I'm still not loving the flowers yet. I don't know. They're a little bit bright. Right, well, you tell me, you guys tell me, what do you think? Should I keep the white or take it off? I'm thinking I'm going to take it off because it just is, um, doesn't blend very well. And I don't want to keep adding to the wreath because then it'll keep adding dimension and I want to keep it very thin. But do you see how I just put it up there and I decide if, you know, if I like it or not? I mean, I like the white. It looks pretty, but for some reason it's just not doing it for me. I'm thinking, um, I don't know. Maybe I should keep adding and see if I like it. Maybe I just don't have enough. I don't know. It's starting to grow on me. I think I'm starting to like it now. I'm adding a little bit more and I'm burying it a little bit deeper in the greenery. All right, let's see what you guys think. That's really pretty. But do you see how this, tell me what you guys think. It's gonna take a minute. Um, somebody's saying they don't like it. They want either white or red. They don't want both. Uh, but just this is just a tip for you guys. Don't hesitate to use summer flowers and a Christmas wreath, okay? It's, you know, you can still make that work. Donna's saying, take it off. Kimberly's saying it looks good. You guys vote and tell me what you think. Take it off, no white. Too harsh, they don't like the white. All right, so everybody's saying take it off. I don't know. You think I should take it off? Let me look. I just love, it does add a lot of like bright, it adds a brightness to it. However, it does remind me a little bit of Valentine's. Okay, let me take let me take this side off and then I'll see what I like if I like it. All right, so you can see the difference. So you can see this is how I'm this you guys, this is it. This is exactly what I do when I make reeds. I put them on and I see if I like it. And now so you can see one side with it and one side without it. All right? And you can see the difference and you tell me what you think. So I add you see how I add it down deep in Let's see what everybody's saying. Somebody's saying, I like the white, but more of a cream. The added white looks good. Maybe a smaller flower. 
the more flowers and white it looks better I like the white better with more flowers it's bright they like it now better with the white they like it when I added the more white okay so they're saying if you're gonna add the white um, you know I do have some smaller but let's see I don't think I have enough I need to keep an eye on the time. I gotta get Miss K from school today. All right, this is not looking. I don't think this is gonna be good. Good either. I was just thinking the white might brighten it up a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to take the larger cream flowers out. Um, but I'm not going to throw these away because I can use them when I'm doing lantern swags. Um, even though they're still short, they will fit perfectly. They can be hot glued in a bow. Um, you know, so don't throw, even when you're make a mistake, don't throw the stuff away. You can always use it for later. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just continue dividing these up. I'm going to use this little white. This is another summer flower from um, Michael's. And I'm just going to cut them off so they're real short. They're like, I don't know, two inches. And I'm just going to place them in and around so what this is going to do now it's just going to add a little bit of um, a little bit of brightness with all the green and the red and it's dainty see see the difference it's just a little subtle it's still white but it's just a little bit more subtle so I'm just gonna go through and hot glue these in going in the same direction as all of the other um, items that I've added in and I'm just gluing them onto the leaves of the base of the wreath okay because these are very very lightweight yep so everybody's they're liking this idea might need to get more glue So when do you guys like get when do you guys start um, decorating for Christmas or are you so I know some some people have said they've already started and um, Listen if I could get the hubs to get the tree out of the attic for me two weeks ago I would have done it because I like to do my own house um, Early where I still have you know, I'm not sick of the glitter yet <laughs> When I wait you know, till after Thanksgiving, I've already made several custom orders, you know, and I've already um, just, I'm already christmas out by the time Thanksgiving rolls around, and I don't want to do my own house, but he wouldn't have anything to do with that. He was like, nope, we are not doing it, and I was like, oh, well, oh, well, I tried, every year I try to decorate a little bit 
earlier just so I feel like I still have the I like it <laughs> I'm not gonna lie you can get sick of this you can get sick of the glitter when you're doing it this for a living the glitter track through the house and the dogs pooping it it can get to be a little bit much you pull down the covers the sheets for your bed and you're like there is glitter in the sheets and not in a good way So comment if you have any questions. Oh, somebody said their sister already has Christmas up. More power. So don't forget, if you like this video, please share it. Um, that is, um, that's just my tip jar, you guys. It just, um, you know, I'm doing this for you guys to help teach the art of wreath making um, for you. And it just um, means the world to me when you share my videos. Also, if you share it, you'll be able to find it easier on your timeline. Um, so that will, that will help you too. But, um, I'm also going to do a drawing. So um, next week, I'm gonna see who shared the video and I'm gonna pick out the winner and they're gonna win this wreath. I'll ship the wreath to you. So, sh so make sure you um, share the video for me and then you'll be entered into the drawing to win the wreath, okay? And this, listen you guys, this wreath would make a great um, Christmas gift. This is the perfect size for Christmas, okay, for a Christmas gift. Because, you know, sometimes you don't want to give a big old, you know, big wreath because um, they could be pricey, number one, but and number two, they're just a little bit big. But then you could give um, something like this, you know, to your mother-in-law or your sister or, um, you know, the teacher. I'm just looking around to see if I have any, um, needs more white. So these would, this would be a great um, gift for you guys to give to, um, you know, to your loved ones. And I'm serious, I probably have less than, probably less than $25 in this wreath. So it's perfect for gift giving. Oh, and what about this? You could also do something like this for a hostess gift. So if you, you know, you have a Christmas party you're going to or something, somebody's home. Now here in the South, it's big. We always take a gift to the host um, to show our appreciation for, you know, allowing us to visit with them in their home. I know some people don't do that all, you know, all throughout um, the area, but here in the South, it's very common for us to take a Cersei to the hostess and give um, as a gift for when we go to a party and stuff. But isn't this cute? Now make sure, so if you share it, you guys could be entered to win it. I think this is so cute. So there's got some white and it's just so, so precious. It's very um, traditional and to me it's just classy looking. It's just a classy, classy wreath. And very simple all right so let me clean up this little bit get to the side and I'm going to show you how I um, tidy up the back remember don't throw any of this away I have um, a bin I can't get to it because I've got so many supplies in the way I've got to unpack but I have a little bin that I keep all of this greenery in okay I don't get rid of any of this stuff I keep it because these are perfect for um, filling in around bows on lantern swags and it's green so it works for all year round and you know Easter spring winter it's perfect so don't get rid of any of this stuff so do you guys like it make sure you give me a thumbs up if you like the like the uh, wreath and thank you guys for the ones who are still hanging out who is still hanging around 
All right, so now this is just um, a, a silk flower leaf that I pulled off of another hydrangea bush, or actually I think it was a poinsettia um, bush. And I'm just gonna go around the back, and let me show you the back. It's already, it's really clean, okay? So there's really nowhere that's um, messy except for right here over the hanger. And if, you know, sometimes if the bigger reeds, they have all this mess of the hot glue and stuff, you can just hot glue these, you know, around to cover that up. But since I only have it right here on the hanger, I'm going to put it right there. But you know what I'm going to do? It's a little bit big. Here's a smaller one. It's a little bit big, but sometimes if I just, you know, if that's all you have, I just cut it. Let's just cut it. So I'm just going to um, cut this in half with my scissors. Actually, I cut it into a, I guess that's a, I don't know. I just cut the stem off. Now I'm going to cut it down the, the um, the vein and I've just made a little piece of it all right so now I'm gonna hot glue that on top and this is going to be the professional touch that you're given the wreath so that um, whoever gets it they won't see you know the mechanics you want to cover that up. You don't want anyone to see how you've made it. It's a secret. No, for real. You want to cover it up. It just adds um, a touch of professionalism to the back. It, it shows if you sell these, um, if you sell, I know a lot of you are selling reeds. If you take this extra step, it just sends a message to your, your buyer that you took pride in your work. Um, that you loved, you know, you did, you even took care of the back of it. It just puts a, um, a little touch to the back too, okay? So I'm just hot gluing this on the back to cover up where um, the, the, the hanger is. And I'm adding glue just to make sure it stays down all the way. Okay. And then I'm just going to hold it here right there so it dries. So you guys, do you have any questions? Oh, everybody's loving it. Okay, so they're sharing it. Yay, thank you for sharing it. Comment below and tell me if you have any questions. And then I'm going to move, I'm going to bring it up closer to you guys so you can see it better, okay? Thanks for sharing. Let me angle this down a little bit. Okay, let's see. Hopefully my phone isn't going to fall out of the, the tripod. But let's see if you can... Um... So here is it up close. So you can see the bow. Um, and then the side. So you can see how we've added the red deep down in. And the grasses just add a lot more texture and um, width to it. But isn't that pretty? And here's the back. So you can see this is where I hot glued the silk flower wreath and it looks really cute. So the back looks just as pretty. Love it, love it. You love it? <laughs> All right, so tell me you guys, if you have any questions, I'll, um, I can answer some of your questions. 
So the, the, somebody's asking about the wreath easel. I purchased that from um, Nancy Alexander, and um, but I, I've also seen them on Etsy. You can search wreath easel on Etsy, and I'll post my um, link in here. A lot of people have been buying them on Etsy, too. Let me try to move this back a little bit. It's kind of hard to fit everything in this little small garage. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, so it doesn't look like anybody's got any questions. Let me just scroll back up. So if you're just joining, I, we just made this really cute, adorable, um, it's a um, Christmas uh, screen door wreath. You can see that it's very thin to fit um, in between a screen door. And um, we started with a, a base wreath that was already made, and we've just added some items to it and added a very um, um, mini bow. It's not very deep, it's very um, squat bow. I don't know what the other word is for it, but it adds you know, soft texture to it. So you've got the spikiness of the leaves and you've got the um, soft berries and then the soft ribbon and it just adds a lot of texture for a very classy Christmas wreath. All right, so I think, um, uh, Gina, I'm thinking that, okay, so if I don't have a screen door on mine, but you should keep it um, about four inches. Uh, it should be the max. Um, and then also, you know, if this is smashed, you know, if it does get smashed, okay, if the door hits it and it gets smashed, look, it still looks cute. You see? All right, and this is going to be hanging on a door. Try to get it in the photo. So it's still gonna look, um, it's still gonna look cute, even if it, it does get a little bit smashed. But I try to keep it between about three to four, probably four inches on the um, wide. Oh yes, so Donna's saying this would be perfect for a kitchen or the powder room. Um, Deanne, you can watch from the very um, beginning of the replay. I purchased the wreath at Hobby Lobby and it was 40, it might have even been 50% off, but um, I showed it in a video last week. Would this be for more a Southern Christmas? No, girl. This is um traditional Christmas. This would be anywhere you're, anywhere located, anywhere. I mean, this is just a traditional Christmas wreath that would look pretty for um, you know, if you just like the red and green theme. Okay, so I wouldn't say it's necessarily Southern. All right, I think that's it. Thank you guys for sharing. And um, thanks for joining me again inside the wreath shop. And um, keep c commenting below and answering your um, asking your questions, and I'll come back in and check it out. And again, if you don't want to, if you feel like you you might miss some of my Facebook Live tutorials, just um, head over to my blog, southerncharmwreaths.com forward slash blog and um, scroll down to the subscribe box and you can subscribe to my newsletter and I will send it to you straight to your email <laughs> and it takes me about a week to get it um, uploaded onto my blog to where I can um, email it out but um, so that way you won't miss anything okay so but here we go love it love it love it and um, thanks again and I hope you guys have a blessed weekend and again thanks for um, liking my page and watching and being so active on the Facebook Live. Bye. You guys have a great day.